Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the basic Unix system administration. Administration means to manage system resources for optimal utilization by the user to get the maximum efficiency from the system. Till now we have discussed about the usage of Unix from end user point of view. That means how the end user, the nav user uses the system in existing form. Then we have discussed about system programming which accesses the core operating system. Through programming we can access various core parts of the system but we can't change the way how the system operates. The, the basic functionality of the system remains the same. Then another is the system administration level. The administration itself defines the change in the configuration of the system. That means how the system behaves, how the system reacts in respective situations. We can change the way the system is set up to use in a different way. And that can be used and utilized by the end users in the way that we have configured. Basically, and the most significant aspect of system administration is security. That how the, there are various security issues that arise from time to time in the system and we have to manage those resources from the security point of view. And so that we have to manipulate the system to cope up with such security issues. And that is what is system administration. Then there comes the term super user. The administration task that is to be done in the system can only be done by the super user. The super user is, is the main user which has the administrative capabilities in the system and we also call the super user as the root user which has the root access to the system core directories and files the super user basically has access to all the files and directories in the system it can override the permissions whatever the permissions are specified particular for particular kind of file whether it is read whether it is write whether it is execute permission with the <laughs> super user can override these permissions and can change for any user when it is required super user is basically the owner of the most of the system files means whatever the system files are available in the system that are owned by the super user that means it is the whole it is the wholesome body in the system which acts as the owner of the system which can manage all the resources all the files all the permissions in the system that is super user then super user uses the <coughs> cell command the cell command is used to manipulate the system by using various kinds of commands for different kind of operations in the system such as su space username this is the command which is used to set current user to super user or another user with proper password access that means if you want to make any particular user as super user then you have to use the su command and the username to whom you want to make the super user then we are discussing about administration through files as you would expect system settings are stored in files whatever the data is there whatever the configuration settings are there all are stored in the files you know it very well so we have to deal with the files for doing the administration tasks in the system and most of these files related to administration are stored in etc directory we will look at files related to users and groups whatever the users are available in the system and the groups in which the users are connected then the file systems what are the different file systems are used in the system then system initialization system initialization means that how do we start up the system when we are doing with some kind of work in the system then 
system upkeep system upkeep is the basic thing that when the system has been started we have to keep it up we have to keep it in uh, executing mode in running mode the system properly functions all the tasks in the system then this is the etc pass wd file which consists of the information about system users as you can see there is uh, information regarding user uh, user like login name its encrypted password its user id its group id real name of the user then home directory of the user and then command interpreter through which the commands are being executed by the user for example bowman colon x colon 65 colon 20 colon d dot bowman colon slash home slash bowman colon slash bin slash ksh in this example bowman is the login name then x is the encrypted password x is the, is the hidden identity in which the password is encrypted format then 65 is the user id through which the system identifies the particular user then 20 is the group, group id the particular user is connected to which group that is identify this group id then d dot bowman is the real name of the user that is using the system then home directory home is the home directory of the user and then command interpreter bin is the command interpreter through which commands are being executed then kss is the cone shell through which commands are used this is the cell that is being used in the system cone shell then another file is etc group it contains the information about system groups for example faculty x23 bowman ribbons mcquinn in this example faculty is the group name in which various user can exist in the system x is the encrypted group password password of the group then 23 is the I group id to uniquely identify the group in the system then bowman this is the list of group members bowman ribbons mcquinn the no, whatever the number of members are there in the system we can list out the all the members with their names distinguished by the commas then etc fs tab it contains the information about file systems for example slash dev slash cdrom slash cdrom iso 9660 defaults comma ro comma user comma no auto zero zero in this example DEV contains the file system. This is the local device or remote directory which contains the information about the file system. Then CD-ROM is the uh, particular kind of directory that we are accessing. Then CD-ROM is the mount point where the particular file is mounted through which we can access the file. Then ISO 9660 is the file system type. Which type of file system is used in that particular file then these are the different mount options default ro user no to these are the options that we use to mount the particular kind of file system then zero zero these are other kind of flags that can that can be used by the user like uh, for security patches for uh, other uh, uh, partitioning details and uh, all these things then etc init tab and etc init dot d the in these files init tab is the file that consists the configuration of the init process that means it is the configuration file for init process init is the initialization process that means when the system initializes a particular file system it is defined in through the init tab file init for initialization and tab for table that means it consists the initialization table data for a 